do it for me. Okay, uh, following on from what Grant, again, my um, claim to fame is that I am on the Wellington Committee of ITPNZ uh, and one of the people responsible for trying to organise this stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But again, uh, tech up. So this was a slightly different view um, of how things worked, or how it worked for me. Uh, so the prehistory of Carl Kutcher. <clears throat> so I just had a little time <laughs> timeline there. So, uh, you know, you end up with some really interesting things. Uh, and one of the things that I really enjoy is being able to say last century, we did it this way, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so a number of things, uh, you know, irritating my parents for most of my life by taking things apart, as you do. Sometimes they even went together with no bits left over. And occasionally they might even work. Uh, and then to basically get rid of me, they sent me to boarding school where I learned interesting things like how to pick locks, how to break into things, how to lie convincingly, uh, and stuff like that. And then I spent most of the rest of my life working for IBM. Some of the things that happened in my life. All right? No? Where's my flying car? It's 2018. Where's my flying car? You know, so, and it's just, when, when, you, when you look at your life, you, you, you realize there are things that are, you know, been and gone. VHS. Who still has VHS? I've got the tapes. I've got nothing to play them on. <laughs> it's, you know, but that's a technology that was born, raised, and died within my lifetime. It's just it's quite incredible. I drew a graph very similar to that once, just measuring out the time my master's thesis took. Mm. <laughs> yeah. um, this is a bit of a plug for, for, for IBM, but it, this is what gets people thinking about how this stuff actually works. So uh, we just run through this. your receipt. Check outlines. Who needs them? Have a nice day. This is the future of e-business. That ad is nearly 20 years old. <laughs> right? So who's opened a store like that recently? Amazon. You know, it's, it's being able to find things. It's just uh, the, the technology is there. That lot like, uh, relies on RFID, and, and it's, you can identify down to the individual item. Uh, fridges, you know, we're talking about fridges nowadays that have this technology in it. You put food in the fridge, it knows exactly what's in there, it knows what its expiry date is, and if you're bored, you can just type in, what can I have for dinner? It says, oh, the mince is going to go off tonight. How about you, you cook yourself some tacos? You know, it's that kind of a thing. So we just go through, you know, how things have... Um, and then it was a case of, you know, what sort of things can we do? Which gets back to, you know, within the things. So we have our um, software development lifecycle, you know, definition, requirements, all of the things that you kind of need, but people tend to forget about. So it's, oh, no, I want to be a programmer, I want to be a games programmer. They want to be games programmers. Why do they want to be a game? There's a whole raft of other things, but there's a whole list of things that you need to work out when you're actually going to do a software or a hardware project or whatever it happens to be. So you've got all these things feeding in, uh, and then you have your, you know, how you actually deliver that. Uh, and the next thing I'll do is just say, here is your standard IT organization chart, right? So there's all the people, there's all the names, there's all the reporting lines, this is what they all need to do. So who does what? You know, what options do you have if you can't program or don't like English? If you don't like English, you've probably got a bit of a problem, but you know. Uh, so we then start drawing little lines. So we have our, um, you know, our architect into planning an organization, dealing with project definitions and all that sort of stuff. Architect was what I was, which is why I was first. Business analysts, again, they need to know what the business is doing. So they're uh, working out, again, in this particular area here. The business analyst will have a bit more feedback within delivery and support, because it's a cycle. 
you know, you go through. So we all know how the cycle works. So all I'm doing is explaining to them, you know, essentially, if you're following that, these are the, the different roles that you could actually have within these particular areas. Web developer. I mean, the web developer's going to be basically, it's going to, a web, any web developer worth their salt is going to be in a, right at the planning stage to know, to have some idea of what's going on. I mean, or in, unless I'm wrong, do people just turn up and say, oh, I want this? No? Say, so, oh, what a great idea. No. So um, it's just mapping the job roles across to the various areas. And what I'm trying to show here is that you're not actually restricted to any one area. You know, there's a whole raft of different roles. So down here we've got um, quality assurance. And this is part of testing, making sure that stuff actually works. They're going to need to be in here, in there, and in there, monitoring. Blah, 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 blah. And this is where your project, this is why the project managers get paid the big bucks, right? Allegedly. Allegedly get paid the big bucks. <laughs> the project managers effectively have to be across everything. They've got to at least know what's going on. Now, I've had project managers come to me, oh, I don't need to know tech stuff. And I'm saying, actually, you do. You need to know enough tech stuff to know when somebody's bullshitting you. That's really what it comes down to. So, um, but there's, the point is that there's a whole raft of different roles, a whole raft of different things you can do, and each one has a different you know, touch point within any, any given program or, or life cycle. Make sense? And then I'll just do a little bit of a, inspirations in my lifetime. All right? So, the alleged moon landings. <laughs> yes? No? I can tell you, this is real. I saw it on TV. I saw it on TV in 1969, yeah, okay. Here's my flying car. This is what the flying car from 1951 was supposed to look like. Jetsons, blah, 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 blah. Vinyl records, Devo, fantastic. Scion organizer, remember those guys? All this kind of stuff. Um, you know, a lot of it's got replaced. This is my first cell phone. Fantastic thing. It actually ran the same operating system as that one. Um, this woman here is uh, a woman called... Uh, um, Sigrid Hrein's daughter, she works for Global Nuclear Sciences. She's uh, obviously um, Icelandic or Nordic or whatever. She actually is from Iceland. She got her start in um, that unpronounceable volcano that, that blew up in Iceland uh, you know, many, many years ago. Well, I mean, they do it every year sort of thing, but this was a while ago. And her school and all the other schools were told, you know, given basically GPS positioning systems, just told to go out and walk around the mountain measuring things. And that's what they did. And that was her uptake into, you know, um, into sciences. This here um, is the list of, uh, you know, earthquakes uh, intensity. They've got lots and lots and lots of little pickup uh, sensors. That's what this thing here is. It, it can uh, measure down to millimetres. GPS positioning down to millimetres, and they can, you can actually see the land move, like the land breathes. So you'll watch the sensor, and it'll, it'll climb for two or three millimetres, and there'll be an earthquake, and it'll drop. And then you watch it again, and it'll climb, 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 there'll be an earthquake, and it'll drop. So they have a couple of hundred in the North Island. They had four in the South Island. <laughs> right. Across the thing. Now, I haven't actually emailed her, but I really want to know how did she get on when she went after the Kaiku earthquake? What did they do? How did they actually get down there? But it was a really interesting thing. So um, one of the things she showed us was, uh, and I'm digressing slightly here, but New Zealand uh, is an absolute gold mine for volcanologists because it has rift, it has subduction, and it has, um, what's the other one? The sliding one? There's subduction, there's rift, and there's, yeah, anyway. So she measured it, uh, showed us the vector diagrams from where these things were. Uh, based on if you were observing from Hawaii. So the interesting thing about New Zealand is this bit's going up, this bit's coming down, this bit from Taupo North is splitting apart, uh, and there's no movement around Wellington. Like all the other country is like vector diagrams all over the place, and there's nothing around Wellington. So what does that mean? Oh, is it a really good place to live? I mean, there's been absolutely no movement around Wellington, around the Wellington Fault Zone, for a very long time. <laughs> Not worrying at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I said, oh, one of the things I suggested was, um, uh, you know, how about fracking? We could frack underneath Wellington. Uh, get, get some movement happening. And she says, well, you know, you've got to put it in, into perspective. Do you want one Force 9, 10 Force 8s, 
100 four sevens, or you know, how many earthquakes do you want? So uh, yeah, anyway, we moved on from that. <laughs> um, Hmm. Um, just areas you work in, cloud, whatever. Uh, remember that? Star Trek? Ever seen a, a movie, How William Shatner Changed the World? Yeah. yeah, fantastic thing. Star Trek, right? The guy who developed this, the Motorola StarTech, deliberately based it off this thing. I mean, it's like, these, these are inspirations. Big Hero 6, right? The little autonomous, you know, robobot thing that they had in there. Wouldn't it be, in, I mean, as long as a child looks at a Big Hero 6 and says, actually, I want to do that, wouldn't that be something interesting? Anyway, I don't think I'll play that one. Unless everyone wants a bit of humor. No? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Humor. He is a harsh mistress. No one knows this better than the men who fish the Firth of Forth, bringing back their catch each morning to sell in the old market. Where's Eric, then? He never misses a market. It was a bad squall last night. Mm. Wretched. Maybe he ran up on some rocks. Uh, maybe he was swept overboard. Maybe he drowned. Mm. Or, uh, sharks. 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 Yeah, sharks. Maybe he already sold his catch online from the boat. Maybe we're on the cusp of something so big we don't even know it. Virtual marketplaces, frictionless economies, the invisible guiding hand of capitalism manifesting itself, even here. Shah. Now you can sell anything from anywhere. Wireless e business from IBM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so it's just, uh, I mean, that's just a slightly different view. So don't think that you can't go and inspire these kids, because you can. Whatever it is you're doing with an IT, there's, whole, it's just, there's just so many things. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm still in the business. I mean, you know, you look at this sort of thing, oh, yeah, IBM, whatever. But there's just so many people doing so many magic, I mean, the, the stuff that you were talking about earlier, I mean, it was just, it's just such a simple thing to do. Well, not simple, but... <laughs> But it helps people, right? You know, if you, you've got a human being at the end of the chain, you're actually doing something to uh, to to enhance human society, which I think is fantastic. Anyway, that's me. Mm -hmm.